uh, our next speaker is Jean-Marc Lemaitre. He's co-director at the IRMB in Montpellier. Thank you. So it's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks to the organizer for the, this opportunity to share our last uh, story uh, on reprogramming. So, um, for many years we are interested in uh, genome and stem cell plasticity in aging and, and reprogramming. And just to, to introduce, uh, to further understand aging, we, we try to compare physiological and pathological uh, aging. It means accelerated aging, and especially uh, in, with the progeria syndrome, uh, which recapitulate the the accelerated aging phenotype. So aging is for sure a progressive decline of physiological function. An increased susceptibility to disease is associated for sure, and it's due to an interplay between genetic and epigenetic factors and uh, associated uh, a decreased regenerative capacity uh, of tissue. And uh, some hallmarks of aging and, uh, has been described by the, in this famous uh, paper uh, review of uh, Lopez Otin. And uh, there is nine hallmarks of uh, aging, and now there is new additional hallmarks. But anyway, we found this hallmark in many uh, uh, age-related pathology. But in the lab, we are more focused on two different hallmarks, which are cellular senescence and and epigenetic alteration, because we, we mean that it's too essential or mark for, for the, uh, the acquisition of the aging phenotypes. And during this uh, conference, uh, there was the question of why we age was uh, asked many times. And if I want to be simple, I will synthesize, synthesize the, the, the fact that we age because our cells age. And because they experience, and Ratan said yesterday, that they experience many different stress, the life is stress, and the cell experience many different stress, and creating damages. And with these damages, the cell has to make a choice, and so, so she decides to, to, to cell death or to senescence, or if it's, the cell is able to repair, she continues to, to do its job, but there is a an observed epigenetic drift uh, associated with transcription noise and an impaired stem cell plasticity. This is what I call deprogramming. So a few years ago, uh, we asked the question in the lab, is cell aging reversible? So we beneficiated to the uh, discovery, uh, the famous discovery of uh, Professor Yamanaka, and we, we investigate whether we could reprogram uh, senescent cells and cells from very old donor, it was centenarian, to derive IPS because it showed that cell identity was reversible. We saw that eventually aging all marks were reversible by the same technology. But reprogramming is a complex process with many different steps and to make a long story short, first there is the, the raising of uh, the cell identity and associated there is modification of the, the, the epigenetic landscape and like a sort of epigenetic barrier uh, to, 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 to overcome. But when we try this famous cocktail uh, of Yamanaka, uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, um, uh, five papers show that Reprogramming, uh, reprogramming favors senescence, and even describing senescence as a barrier to reprogramming. So we tried effectively to reprogram our cells, our senescent cells and H cell, with the Yamanaka factor cocktail, it didn't work. We, we checked another cocktail uh, published by uh, James Thompson, uh, replacing KLF4 and CEMIC by nanoanglin 28 it didn't work at all. So we combined the two cocktails, and we define a, a six-factor cocktail. And with this cocktail, we were able to reprogram uh, a senescent and H cell from centenarian, and we produce IPS efficiently, and we were able to redifferentiate these cells and reset uh, all the hallmark of aging. 
and showing that for the first time that cell aging was reversible through the pluripotency stage. But then we ask another question, is it uh, necessary to go through the pluripotency uh, to rejuvenate an aging cell? And we de decided to, to, to develop model in vitro and vivo to, to see whether we need six factor or four factor or, and, and, and also the, the, the pluripotency to, to rejuvenate cell. So we develop a mouse model uh, two different mouse models, one uh, reprogramming model and the other reprogramming with a, a, a cross with a progeria model with only one allele of progerin and one allele of, of uh, reprogramming factors. So we, we select uh, uh, dermal fibroblasts from these two, two models and we, we observe that in the in vitro induction we are able to was able to, to, to differentially express 395 genes. But what was really interesting was, for sure, if we look at gene pathway uh, involved, uh, there is one healing, uh, for sure, because it's from the skin, but there is also, uh, surprisingly, uh, something like osteoblast differentiation, uh, renal uh, morphogenesis, and so on. So we decided to look further at what is really the mechanism involved. And first, we, we look at senescence, because it was described that reprogramming induced uh, promotes senescence. And contrary to, to what was observed before, with one allele only, we observed that we decrease DNA damage and we also decrease senescence. Then we looked at autophagy, which it's a mechanism to clean uh, uh, H cells. So, so uh, looking at uh, the complex LC3-1 and LC2, and we, we observe that we improve the metabolic, uh, the, the autophagic flu uh, with the, the reprogramming, as presented also by the, the, the docking of the, this uh, LCT, LC3-1 uh, LC3 and 2 uh, on the on the autophagosome. Then we looked at in vivo uh, induction. So we, we start from our uh, progeria model, uh, living one year uh, compared to two years for wild type. And we try to reproduce the model used by Ocampo. It was uh, uh, progeria or mozygote, and we use uh, heterozygote. And when we develop the same protocol, it means chronic induction, uh, two, days a, two days a week during all the life of the, of the, the mouse, uh, we observe the, an increase in longevity, consistent with the, 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 the previous uh, published uh, data. Then we, because the protocol was chronic with one milligram per meal because it was a high induction of the reprogramming factor. We decided to decrease the, the level of expression by decreasing the, the DOX induction and to, to make the, 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 the reprogramming continuously during the life. And we, we observed that with this, in this case, we, we observe also in a, an increased uh, longevity uh, in our model. So then we, we decided to use a 0 0.2, the, the lower dose of induction, early in life to see what occurs late in life. And we observed that there is a, still no, no, no difference. But if we increase a little bit to 0 0.5, so increase the level of induction, we observe that we, we, we have an increased lifespan in old age uh, of the animal. So we only use a single expression early in the life at two months, and we observe an increased uh, longevity for the mice. So we decided to, to, to look at the impact uh, of this increased longevity on tissue uh, structure. First, we look at the body composition, and surprisingly, we observe that we, uh, a single transient uh, expression early in life improved body composition during all the life of the animal. So it, it, it maintained the muscle mass and also the, the, the adipose tissue uh, uh, decrease. 
to, to look further at the consequence of this induction, we observe that there is a, an improved fitness, and we evaluate this by a classical test, and also a, a, a grip strength test, uh, to, to see that it's really the fitness is improved only with one single induction of reprogramming early in life. Then we look at age-related uh, deterioration of tissue, and classically it was uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, uh, and when we induce early in life our reprogramming, at eight, at eight months, oops, at eight months we observe that there is a decrease uh, fibrosis uh, in the lung. Then we'll, we look at spleen integrity, and uh, we know that with the age there is a, a, distortion, a distortion between uh, the, the, the white part and, 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 uh, and the red pulp uh, in, in this organ. And uh, we measure the, the, the distortion and, uh, with the, the scoring uh, already published uh, previously. And we observe that we, we have an improvement uh, in the, the, the maintaining integrity of, uh, of the spleen uh, in old age. If we look at, um, at uh, kidneys, it's, it's the same. Uh, we look at, uh, at uh, difference uh, observing aging, so it means that increasing the, 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 the sorry, the um, the tubuli, <laughs> sorry, and um, we observe that the tubuli uh, is maintained uh, uh, in size in aging, and uh, the fractional mesangial area around the tubuli uh, is also maintained. It's decreased, it's decreased by the treatment, and uh, the fibrosis also associated in this uh, area is decreased by the treatment early in life. As a, an important pathology related to aging, um, osteoarthritis uh, was also prevented by the treatment early in life that we look at uh, late in life. Uh, we measure the, the cartilage volume uh, in the knee. We also um, observe uh, uh, an increase uh, cartilage volume uh, in, in treated animals and also uh, a decrease uh, surface degradation of the cartilage which is associated to, to uh, osteoarthritis. But we also look at, because the link of, of the subchondral bone and, and uh, the, the cartilage, we also look at the, at the subchondral bone and uh, we observe uh, an increased volume and also uh, 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 thickness uh, improved. Uh, by the treatments. Then we look at osteoporosis in the t tibia, cortical region, and we, we, we have an improved bone volume and also uh, uh, an increased mineral density. So typically, uh, the treatment early in life uh, prevent osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. But what was really, what, what was really amazing was the skin. Uh, this is the same magnification, so <laughs> you can see that, that all the layer of the skin are increased inside compared to, to the degenerated layer uh, at the atrophy observed in, in aging. So we decided to, because we have an effect, we treat early in life, and we have an effect, a uh, sort of memory effect late uh, in life, so we so to epigenetic modification, and we, we treat the mice, and just after the treatment, to the, the treatment is 2.5 2, uh, uh, a week uh, of uh, 0.5 mL of dox, and we prepare the, the skin and, and we look at the methyl. We identify uh, around 2,000 differential methylation, methylation uh, region, and so we, we believe that probably this differential methylation, this epigenetic reprogramming, could be in part maintained later on uh, in, in old age. What was also amazing that it's we induce reprogramming, we also improve air recovery. Then we, we try to generalize this uh, epigenetic reprogramming and we look at different tissue 
And in many different tissue, we look at uh, that 400 and around 500 CPG where differentiated, uh, differentiated methylated in several tissues. So indicating that it's probably a, a, a more general mechanism uh, to, to, to reprogram the, 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 the aging phenotype. So in conclusion, uh, I hope I convince you that uh, we reprogram the aging phenotype and uh, our transient uh, induction in vitro, contrary to what was published before, uh, reduce DNA damage and senescence and activate autophagy toward a sort of rejuvenated physiology, cell physiology. And when applied early in life, uh, this short induction improves body composition and fitness lifelong. It induces epigenetic reprogramming uh, revealed by, by a common differentially, differentially uh, methylated region in multiple organs. And as a consequence, it prevents some age-related pathology like osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, deterioration of, of lung and kidney, and so on and even promote our recovery. So we strongly believe that it's a new opportunity finally to, to, to fight aging. And uh, the last slide to thanks uh, all the, the people from the lab, especially Olivier Milavé present in the, in the room and Nora Leborn, uh, Quentin Allais, Paul Bensadoun for, for the, the, the job, uh, this uh, really nice story and also all the platform uh, used, we use uh, uh, currently to, to, to produce the data, and also a three or postdoc position is available in the lab. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thanks for a very interesting talk. We are very short in time, but maybe you can make one very quick question. Um, we can take the most upvoted question, which is from Ronald Cutler. He's asking, why are you using a progeria mouse model instead of wild type? Uh, first, because uh, the, the, the longevity of wild type is two, two years, so it's complicated first. But we also did, uh, we also use uh, the, the wild type and we also observe, and it's uh, present in our uh, publication in BioArchive, and uh, we observe also a late uh, increase in longevity in wild type. Yeah, thank you very much, and you can see there are many more questions on Slack, so maybe you can just go online and answer them, and okay. uh, thanks for listening.